faith, of everybody's faith, is from what? From the word of God. And so the Bible says that faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Faith, uh, the word of God is the source of faith. And the source that produces, uh, what produces faith is also the word of God, because God speaks. But then, when we keep on hearing the word of God, over and over and over, the Bible says, faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. It's word by hearing, and hearing, and hearing it over again, we have faith. Amen. We have faith to believe God for something. You see, there are certain things you hear over and over and over and over and over again, and you begin to have faith for it. It doesn't matter what you begin to hear. If you begin to hear negative, negative, you have faith for negative. Because whatever faith it is, it comes by hearing. If it is doubt, it comes by hearing. If it is unbelief, it comes by hearing. Do you know that unbelief is also faith? Doubt is faith because you have faith that it will not happen. That is also faith. But it's the opposite way. It's faith. You have a strong faith that it will not happen. And that is your faith. That it will not happen. And whatever you keep on hearing and over and over and over and over, you develop faith for it. And you go for it. And so, the, the source of faith is the word of God. And the source of production of faith is by hearing and hearing by the word of God. When you keep on, oh God, when you keep on hearing the word of God over and over and over and over again, you have faith for it. You have faith for it. You have faith for it. Faith does not come by going to church. Faith comes by hearing the word of God. You can come to church and you will not hear the word, and so you will not have faith. You have faith by hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing the word of God. And then you will follow what? Faith. Beloved, faith does not come by laying hands on you. Faith does not come by, actually, as a matter of faith does not come by prayer. Faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. It's very, very important. You see, the way I am speaking to you, I've come not to impress anybody. I didn't drive all the way to this place, leave my husband and come here and all the things that is wrong. Just to, I, I am here to impact faith into you. Because one single faith that you have, it can change your whole world around. Because the Bible says that the faith, even if you have a, a little faith like the master seed, it has the capacity, it has the capacity, it has the ability to remove mountains Amen. from you. And what I am doing is that I am scaring faith within you. I am scaring what? Faith within you. I am speaking the word of God. The Bible said that, and Paul went to a place to preach, and as he was preaching the word, as he was preaching the word, he saw a people that was there, that he had no faith to receive the word of God. Because faith has been built so much in him that he was ready. And immediately he said, get up and walk. Jesus turned to the woman with the issue of that. He said, it's not my anointing that has made you whole. It is not your, and he said, your faith has made you whole. Because the woman has the faith that if he can touch the hem of his garment, he will be made whole. Sometimes what makes you whole is not the pastor's anointing. It's not anybody anointing. You must be full of faith on your own to be able to reach out and change the situation. Amen. You see, I had I had the word that said yesterday I we were discussing the word of God and he was telling me a scripture he read and he was saying about it. He said, and there was a tender no, no, God was not in it. Amen. Amen. Don't worry, that thing is in bed, is in Mohan. <laughs> I know what you are talking about. We changed car and we didn't change it, so it's still in Mohan. Amen. So faith come by hearing the word. And Pastor have taught that faith is a law. He said by what? By the law of faith. Faith is a law. And what makes faith a law is that anybody that law is applied to everybody. And law is a principle. And it, 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 it works everywhere. It works for everybody. It works everywhere. It works in Africa. It works in America. It works in a woman. 
And that is why I do not, I do not read any scripture and say that that is for man. No, 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 no. Because faith is a law. And everybody can apply the law. And it will work. It's a law. Faith is a law. Faith is a principle. When a man jumps from up, he will, he will crash. A woman jump, he will crash. It's a law. Faith is a law. And so then, we have to hear the word of God. That's what, it, 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 it disturbs my whole being as I'm going to teach you. It disturbs my whole being. Where women radicate the study of the word of God and the and seriousness of, of church to their husband and have a laid back attitude when it comes to spiritual things as if you are being frivolous. Because let me tell you, as they just live by his own faith, your husband lives by his faith, and I live by my own what? Faith. Amen. Amen. So I'm not going to walk into church and I'm not going to say that I won't listen to the word of God. My husband, my husband, hey, you know what? No. When it comes to faith, we stand alone. And the issue that you go through in life, let me tell you, beloved, if you don't have it, the husband cannot help you. I've been into a situation that my husband could not. What can you tell me? What, can, what will you tell me? I am the one going through the pain. Hallelujah. I'm the one going through the discouragement. And sometimes you wish you can sweep over, but you can't. The individual must have a personal faith. Woman, you must have a personal faith. Don't put your faith into anybody. Have faith in God. Amen. Have faith in God. Amen. Have faith in His Word. Amen. 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 Have faith in God. Yes. Have faith in God. Very, very important. Extremely important that you have faith in God. And so faith is the law. And let me tell you, faith is the law. And a lot of women there have used their faith and Jesus has recommended your faith. Mm. When you read it, uh, the heroes of faith, the hall of faith, when you read it, there are women missing it. He said women receive their, uh, what do you call, their children back to life. Women apply their faith as long as, as men also apply their faith. And when they apply their faith, the power in the word of God works for them. Amen. Abraham did not see his even son dead. He, he was there and just about to uh, kill his son. And uh, his son said, Hey, Papa, are you going to kill me? Where is the uh, Have you brought me here to kill me? Where, where is the love, Papa? Peter. <laughs> You're all just Papa, Peter. Where is the love? What are you going to do here? <laughs> and the father said, God will provide. But this woman saw her son die. Right in front of her, and he put her on the bed. Yeah. And he didn't even inform the husband because he made the husband pray. The way the husband said, she will start crying. The husband will start arranging the barrier. The husband said, he just picked him like that. And there are things that I do by faith. I just keep up. And Pastor said, I know all your secret deeds. As you are going up, and I say, I'm exercising my faith. <laughs> I'm exercising my faith everywhere. I draw and I push, and I draw and I push. Amen. She put the child there. And he said, hey, Simon, where are you? Bring me the horse. We are going. I start galloping towards the man of God. He went. The man of God sent his servant. He said, I don't need a servant. This one is the master's anointing. Mm -hmm. You are going to come. How? How is your son? He said, it is well. It is well. Why are you coming to me? He said, it is well. That's why you have to come. You must understand the language that I am speaking. Mm -hmm. You must, you must decode the message. Yeah. That I cannot come here like that. You see me like this and you think everything is well with me, man of God. Mm. Hallelujah. The woman exercised her faith and God honored her faith. Amen. Amen. Woman seek out and, and, and develop faith. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Be brave. Amen. And develop faith in God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 And so women exercise. Faith is a law and everybody can have it. The word of God tells us in so many scriptures the word of God has told us. In Joshua chapter 9, what, the verse number 9, he said, have I not commanded you be strong and courageous? Deuteronomy chapter 31, the verse number says, be strong and courageous. Do not fear or be in dead dread of them. Zechariah 8, 9, that says the Lord of hosts, let your hands be strong. Joshua chapter 23, the verse 
chapter verse says, therefore be strong to keep and to do all that is written in the book of the law. Chronicles chapter 28, the verse number 20. Then David said to Solomon, his son, be strong and courageous. Second Chronicles chapter 32, the verse number 7. Be strong and courageous. Haggai chapter 2, the verse number 4. Yet, now be strong, O Zerubbabel, declare the Lord. Be strong, O Joshua, son of Hadika, the high priest. Be strong, all you people of the land. Declare the word of God. Hallelujah. You see, the word of God admonishes. Why must we be brave? The word of God admonishes us to be brave. Amen. The word of God admonishes you to be brave. Beloved, all this in the scripture is saying is telling you to be strong. Be strong, be of a good courage. Be strong and be determined. Be brave. Don't be timid. Don't be lay, don't lay back. Hallelujah. Believe in the Lord. And trust in the Lord. The word of God. There's no man and there's no woman that have done great things for God that doesn't need to be strong. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. The word of God, I'm telling you, it is said that we have 365 days. And every scripture we have 365, fear not. Because there are things that causes fear in us as human beings. And God ensured that he has given us 365 words about fear. Every person that you wake up in the morning and the word of God is telling you, fear not. Fear not means be brave. Because bravery is not an absence of fear. Bravery is not absence of doubt. Bravery is that I'm doing it in spite of my fear. Mm -hmm. <laughs> bravery is not in spite of danger. I see the danger yet I am doing it in a way. Bravery is not encouraged. It's not in spite of that it's, it's not difficult. Yes, it's difficult, but I'm doing it in a way. Bravery is not because it's possible. I see impossibility, but bravery tells you that with God, all things are possible. And so I am daring to do it. And that is what it means to be brave. When you see somebody doing something, it's not because it, the person is not fearful. I, I fear. And the last thing I want you to see in my eyes to see my fear. Hallelujah. That is the last thing that I want you to see is to see my fear. Because we all fear. Jesus there going to the cross. He knows what is entailed. He knows that his life was coming to an end. That night he went to God over and over. And yet every time he woke, he woke up, I dare I will go. I will not back off. I will go. I will not back off. I will go. I will not back off. He knows that he was going to die. He knows that it's the end of his ministry. And yet he dare be brave. Brave woman does not mean that you don't have fear. Brave woman does not mean that there's no intimidation. Brave woman does not mean you don't know the danger that is involved. Brave woman does not mean that you, you, you're, you are weak. Brave woman is not that you don't have the, the wisdom and the ability and the resources. Brave means that it must be done and it must be done. I will do what I can and I will leave rest to God. I will take the first step. I don't know where the next step is coming, but I am taking the first step, believing that every step that I take, God is with me. That is what it means to be praised. Yeah. All the time, pastor will ask me, all these, these brave women, where is money? Where is money? You want to do this? You want to do that? You want to do it? And some of the things I need to hide and do them because when you hear what I'm going to do, you will tell me, eh? Where are you going to do it? Last time when I put this person here, put this, he said, how are you going to do it? Immediately I put the, what do you call it? The ticket money, chat on the table, he said, eh? So you are hiding all this money with you in the house like that. Where do you get it? So I was passing by, he was passing by in my office. And he said, the aunt has come. And I said, which aunt? He said, the aunt, the women, they are like aunts. They come to their mother and they bring their little money. Little money. They will come and they drop their ten euro. They will come. And anytime you see, what do you call it? Julie, he said, the, the aunt's mother has come. They will come, they will drop their five euro. They will drop their ten euro. They will drop their twenty euro. 
you prove that ten minutes prayer, mama, and you go, mama, and you go. Before you realize, we have our money, we have our everything, and we are doing what we want to do. Hallelujah! That is bravery. Amen. That is bravery. When we went to what you call it, uh, Dubai, this time I have calculated everything. I have my design with me. I have everything. And I was going to produce. When they told me, Pastor turned to me, do you know how much it's going to be? I said, yes. Anita said she will bring the envelope now. You wait. <laughs> <laughs> Immediately, I brought the envelope out. He said, so tell us, as we are walking, you have this money. <laughs> Hold my back like this with my money. <laughs> the man says 700. I count 700 euros. Tap, 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 tap on the ground. Oh, and you're going to try. I said, hey. Because you see, you don't have money. You, you, so, Teresa, you are holding this money. <laughs> when we were at the airport, he said, Do you have any money to declare? <laughs> Oh, 
what to do. You come to a place in life that life is detecting for you because life has brought you to a place that you are not in control of your life. And it seems the childhood dream is always, almost what? Almost gone. But here comes the case. God show up in the prison. God show up in the prison in an unusual way, in an unusual manner. And immediately God show up in the in, 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 in the prison and he wants to go to Pharaoh. Immediately he put off the prison cross. I'm not going to my future with that old prison attitude. Tomorrow I will talk about how you are how to enter. A lot of us enter into our new realm with our past. Mm -hmm. Our this is because of this. It didn't kill you, you are alive. Look, look. You are alive, look forward. Yes. Because there's more brighter future ahead. He, yes. he, he freaked himself up. You know, as a woman, when you grow up, you are growing up as a child. And as a, as a girl, you have a dream. What you want your life to be. You want to do this, you want to do that. By the time as a, as a young girl you grow up, you get that uh, tradition and culture has bossed women in such a way that you don't know what to do. You don't know what to do. You are a woman. You are just a woman. Thank you very much. You are a woman. You can't do this. You are a woman. 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 Everywhere. And they show you where your office is. They show you where your end is. They show you where a good woman is. And it's like your life is, is, has come to an end. Tradition versus the word of God. And all of a sudden, you read in the word of God, and you begin to see the portrait of God for a woman. And the Bible says that in the beginning, God created she, he, and he. He created the male and the female, and he blessed both of them, and he commissioned both of them, and he told both of them, be fruitful, and be an out dominion over the planet, and over everything. You realize that you are part in the original devil. You are not created in the image of a man, you are created in the image of God. And in the likeness of God, you are created. The same Holy Spirit was in me, the same Savior, the same Word of God. Why? On the day of Pentecost, when the Holy Ghost fall, it fall upon a man and it fall on the woman. It's the same Savior. Why am I being hindered? You realize that if you are not prayed, you cannot rise up to be who God wants you to be. Because tradition versus the Word of God. In the way you call it, in, but in, I'll tell you, I have no problem with submission. I have no problem with submission to my husband. Something I do gladly. Something that I do gladly. Because you know what? I have come to understand that if he's the head, I'm the one carrying him because it's the neck that is carrying the head. <laughs> you are carried by him. I have enough to it, so it is not a problem for me. Because the head doesn't carry itself, does it? It's the body that is carrying it. He needs me to help him. So I, I am proudly doing my work, you know. Yes. Carrying you where you, you, you really go. I have no problem with submission. Not at all. I don't have any problem with submission at all. And I never want to be a man. I always I want to be created a woman again. Because you know what? When we are traveling and we are going, I'm not the one carrying the, the, the bags and put it on the castle. It's the man. And the queen is relaxing very well. <laughs> Hallelujah. The queen is relaxing very well. Hallelujah. I don't have any problem. I'm not talking about. You see, submission in marriage does not mean that submission in everywhere you go. So in my marriage, I submit to my husband, but I don't submit to every man everywhere. In the world, I can compete. In the world, I can be who God says I am in the church. God did not say that every woman should submit to everywhere. Yes, yes. And so I can be who God says I am. But in the house, it's not telling me that I am living in here and American president is, a, is president over me. He's not a president over me. I submit to Angela Merkel. Hey, Joe 
leadership, it is God that has placed him there. It, it gives you, it, it, it's a way where you enhance the man's leadership. It's, it, it's respecting yourself and giving room for everybody to operate where they need to work, to operate. I'm not standing in the way of God. I don't have any problem of my life. I don't have, but I am not supposed to be submitted to every man I meet on the street. And so whatever God put on my heart to do, I should be able to work. To do it. Please, are you getting me? I should be able to do it. Because, what's your name, Pastor Sirius? Because of Pastor Sirius. Syria. You also, okay. <laughs> you understand? If I saw a quote where somebody is saying that the same men who will never want their women to rise up to do anything, when your wife is pregnant, they are looking for a female doctor to take care of them. Hallelujah. I can be a pilot because God has not said that I, I cannot be a pilot. Hallelujah. As a matter of fact, that's really submitting to a husband means that you cannot be anything. That submission means that I should not study. I should not have career. I should, is that what it means? Exactly. You must understand it. And because a lot of women are not reading the word, they do not understand. They believe that being a brave woman is being disrespectful to your husband. It's a sin to do that. It's a sin to do that. When you do, when you do that, you are living in disobedience to God. As a matter of fact, I'm not saying that everything, but what is right before God? What is right before God? I have no problem about it. I don't have any problem about it. And I tell God for, the, for my husband, we, we can discuss everything. So, Anita is my witness. You see, you see what? He, you can hardly, if he enters into the house and you do not run, the next minute you see him taking his own food by himself. And it is out of him. He took his own food. I always run after him. He's not going to sit down and tell you, my food, please. No. When he finished eating, he's taking his. The only time pastor is sitting down and asking somebody to come and do something for his daughter, he's on the phone or doing something very busy. And so he needs something more. And so please, can you clear this place? If not, immediately he finishes, he just picks up his, his plate and he's going to the room. I mean, aren't you blessed by such a man? You're blessed. He has your distance. He does his things. He doesn't put pressure on me. Amen. 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 So what is what, what what it makes submission very what easy because this is not someone who wants to surprise you. And it is wisdom that you also have a way of supporting the person. But my point here is that, that submission to my husband does not mean that I cannot do I cannot improve myself. I cannot I cannot grow. I cannot advance. I cannot be a businesswoman. I cannot advance in life. That is not what the scripture is what he's saying. Hallelujah. Yeah. So be brave. Tradition versus the word of God. Hallelujah. I, I personally lay my a lot of things down because it is a teamwork. Two of us cannot be busy at the same time because the children must be raised. So for the plan that we have for our children, I stay back and take care so that he can go on. But it was not forced on me. And we do it. And then the time come, I move on to do what I was supposed to do, which is very important. Amen. Amen. And so tradition. Please, I want you to get me and get me well. I'm not pro, I'm not promoting rebellious in the house. No. No. I don't live like that in my home. If I live like that in my home, I will not be blessed. I will not be blessed. I don't live like that in my home. And everything. And I have a way of pushing things through. I tell somebody, if you want Pastor to 
do something else. Even um, the guest preachers that has to come to break women, I'm not the one who, first of all, call them. I pray about them. Talk it over with pastor. And when he said yes, I said, okay. I'm not the first person to call them and say, I want you to come and speak in the break room. It's my husband who picked the phone Amen. and call first. Amen. And when he finished calling, I follow up. Amen. And I do it. I want some people to do uh, what you call an advert for me. Miss, uh, other people are giving the name. I wrote to Sir, can you speak to Bishop Makando for me? I can call, but I don't do that. I know my role. Amen. And it, it makes it smooth in a way. If I say something and it's not in agreement with it, and I know that it is the will of God, I go and I come it in prayer. <laughs> and I come again and I lay the scriptures there and we talk about it. Hallelujah. Amen. And so, please, I want you to get me, but nothing, being a woman, does not prevent you from being what God says you are. Amen. 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 It cannot stop you from being what God says you are. Amen. Amen. So tradition versus the word of God. Number four, brave. Moses' mother was brave. Moses' mother was, I, I mean, I like that woman. He was brave against Pharaoh's decree. The decree that Pharaoh put, he said, that was my child. She was a brave woman. She was just a brave woman. He said, you know what? You can have every, you know, Pharaoh, you can kill everybody's child, but my lost my child. I will be the last person to see my child. I will not hand her. I will not hand my child over to you. It's not going to happen. And she didn't do it. She is a brave woman. This is a brave woman. When you find something wrong and it's not in line with the word of God, you stand against it. Amen. She stood. Example, Mary and Joseph, she dared to believe the word of God. She said, this is the will of God for my life. God has chosen me to be the carrier of what you call it, of the Messiah. Though it is contrary, but I am willing to take that. I am willing. Our wedding is coming up. Our this I don't know, but I'm willing to take that. If God says, this is who she wants me to be, I want to be like that. Amen. She was brave. And God spoke to Joseph about that. Rahab, Anna was brave against her rabbi. When her rabbi was doing all kinds of things, that woman dared and organized a prayer meeting on her own. Amen. Amen. A one woman prayer conference, Rami. He prayed her until the man of God has to step in. Amen. He was brave. Rahab was brave to hide the spies. Ruth was brave to go with Naomi. Pharaoh's daughter was brave. I mean, you are carrying an Egyptian child into the house of your father. When your father said every Egyptian boy must die. But that lady was so brave. He said, God has put on my heart. I have had compassion of this child. And I'm using my authority that this child will know. And brought that same uh, what you call it, uh, evil child straight to his father's house. Two women fighting Pharaoh, and Pharaoh couldn't, didn't know what to do. Here Pharaoh is in his house, here they are, are, appear a, a Jewish boy running. Then all of a sudden, a Jewish mother also came as a nanny in the house. And the two women are in the, they were brave. And God honored their bravery. God honored their bravery. You must be brave. You must be brave. The midwives were brave. They didn't kill the children of the Jewish women. When you give God and Mr. Christ said, please just go. Just go. We will give you a certificate, a different certificate, just go. They did the right thing. Abigail was brave. The woman with the alabaster boss was brave. Sarah was so brave to give birth at the age of 90. Elizabeth was brave. You see, so bravery, as I'm telling you, is not because people climb mountain, bravery in little things. You dare do it. You dare do it. If you can't dare be brave at little things, how can you be brave at big things? These are women who, whatever they are doing, 
no matter the opposition, they did what they are supposed to what? to do. So far as is with the will of God, so far as is in line with God's word, they did what they are supposed to what they are supposed to do, and God backed them up. Amen. Be brave. Be brave. Because you know what? The very thing you want, somebody else wanted. it. <laughs> the very child that is chosen by God is the very child that enemy has mark. So you've got to be brave. You've got to be brave. Have I spoken to somebody in your time is going? So I will be ending up here because I'm going to talk about a change. A change which is very, very important. You see, we are in traditions. We, as women, we have found ourselves in so many traditions. We have, and to be very frank with you, even the men and people around us, they themselves are also bound in tradition. Because as a man growing up, you have been taught how to handle a woman. And that is all that you know. So it's not only you, the woman, that find yourself. The man also find himself in that. And sometimes when they decide to do the contrary, people are beginning to speak against them. You understand? So we find ourselves in certain level of drug and we need to be brave. Brave in little things. Brave. Women, I want to talk about children. I'm so passionate about that. Be brave and not just surround your children to social media. Be brave. Don't let your children come and sit in the church. And once they're in the church, you're giving them a, what you call it, a phone. And in the church, they're just scrolling phone in the church. Why are they in church? Why are they in church? You surround your children to social media. You don't control anything. I'm asking myself, why should a child of seven years have, uh, what do you call it, flats, internet? Why should he? Why should he? And then she browse everywhere. Why should a child that is failing exams be given award? Why should a child that has failed the exam, the next minute she's getting the new iPhone? If you fail, I am withdrawing. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Wow. There's no award and reward system in the house. So the children grow up and not knowing what that life you are rewarded for what you do. And that life things does not come for you because of just like that. And so our young ones are growing with entitlement mentality. Because they don't know that you like you are promoted for the good things you've done. But we are in the house, we don't teach them that when you do bad things, you are punished. And when you do good things, you are rewarded. They don't know each and every any of them. And so they are there. Whether they are failing their eyes up or they are not failing their eyes up, they are on equal platter. Mm -hmm. And so they grow up with the entitlement mentality. Somebody has to do for me. As it's near it down. No, this is me. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Bravery in some, some of these things. Dare to train your children different. Mm -hmm. Dare to treat your wife different, husband different. Dare when everybody is doing different things. Dare to believe and do what God says uh, you should you should be. Dare to train your children differently. Dare to marry differently. Dare to relate differently. Dare to have a change in your life. That is not that everybody. I'm asking myself when a child is uh, very young and already you are wearing the child mini 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 skirt. No problem. She's now used to mini skirt. By the time she's 13 or 14 and you want her to wear a long dress, who trained her to wear mini? You know, who trained her to wear? That's why the Bible said that train the child the way she should go and when she grow, she will not depart from it. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Dare to break a change in life. Be brave in little things. We pray even for a mother to say that, look, I am suspending my education for the meantime, for the sake of education of my children and for the future of my children, is great. You need, you need, you need, you need to be brave to do that. You need to be brave to do a lot of things. You need to be brave to to live a Christian life as a woman of God, as a 
the child of God has to live. Do you know that change is happening all around us? Every day we are changed. As I end my message, because I just explained to you why we must be brave. And tomorrow I will go in the changes that we must dare to change. Offer and Ruth. Ruth cried. An offer cried. Kids work on emotion. But Ruth was resolute. Say no way. I'm going. I, I don't know. I'm not going. I'm going. Not emotion. Keys and uh, you know I love you. No. Not emotion, but real. To do what he was determined to step to the unknown. She was determined to make a change. She was determined that the covenant that I've given, I'm, 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 I'm going. I am going. Whatever happens, it should happen. I'm ready to go. I'm ready to make a change. I'm ready to make a change. I'm ready to make a change. I'm ready to step out. I'm ready to step in. The woman is, she said, no. I'm determined. I want to go. You see, change is happening everywhere. There are four different kinds of change that happens to all of us. The change that happens around you, the change that happens within you, the change that you institute, and the change that is enforced on you. One of the best things you have to do in life is to initiate change. Is to initiate change in your life. Initiate change. There are certain change when it comes, you have to plan and adjust the life plan that you want to change. Um, uh, the, I heard somebody saying that, look, change happened. Everybody, everybody changed. For instance, as you see, you can change from um, 80 kilo side uh, weight to 140. Is that not a change? But is, that, is it a good change? No. It's a bad change. It's a bad change. As a change, it happens to every one of us. But the change you initiate is the powerful one. And who's there to initiate change? He said that this is it. How long will I put on a widow cloth? It has happened. The man is dead. The man is gone. But here I am. I'm young. Life is ahead of me. Things have happened. My dream as a woman didn't happen. My dream of marrying and living with my husband and having children and doing this, it didn't happen. But I'm not going to, oh, to, to sit down and need a change. And so when you met Boaz, he didn't go and tell him of her past. The Bible said that the night before he met Boaz, he threw away that kind of widow dress. Put on the field. He said, I've met a new destiny. I'm not bringing your old attitude, your old behavior, your old self-pity. I'm not bringing it. I am ready to meet another man. I'm ready to make another change in my life. The body has to make a change. This happens to all of us. And you have a, are, are, are you brave enough to make a change? A lot of us, God opened a door for us. But our past, we can't depart with our past. Mm -hmm. We can't depart from our past. Immediately, Jesus called the black man materials. The first thing he did is to throw away her past. His past. The clothes of begging. That begging mentality. That's one thing I don't like in life. Begging mentality. When you appear, people see that you are really begging. Begging to be loved. Begging to be accepted. Begging to... Everything you are begging. Better in life. Dare that you have something in life to give. Throw away that garment of begging attitude, self pity attitude. Throw it away and approach. You have met Jesus, the lover of your soul. You have met Jesus, the savior of your life. You have met Jesus. He's capable of changing everything around you. The last relationship didn't work, but you still have a relationship with Jesus Christ. The last job didn't work, but you still have. Relationship with 